Dirat was born in India's Surat province in 1918. His father, a tailor, immigrated to South Africa soon after. In 1927, Dirat joined him in the city of Durban, on the east coast of South Africa. The young Dirat excelled at school, but poverty forced him to leave and start work when he was 16. It was as a furniture salesman that Dirat encountered missionaries sent to convert non-Christians and where he began to think about comparative religions. Dirat is considered by many to be more a scholar of the Bible than the Quran. Unsung Heroes Stop here! And think about Ahmad Dirat's hatred towards Israel and America. He hates anything else except Islam and Islamic countries. He hated and attacked all religions, people, and cultures. Ahmad Dirat's whole life is full of hate. Please continue listening to his unfortunate and evil story. Among Dirat's close friends were Ghulam Hussein Vankar and Ta'ur Rasul, whom many refer to as unsung heroes of Dirat's career. They formed a study circle to look at the teachings of the Quran, and in 1956 Dirat and Vankar set up the Ibsi in Durban. Dirat delivered his first public lecture in 1942 at what was then the Avalon Cinema in Durban. His topic was Muhammad, Messenger of Peace. Over the next four decades, Dirat immersed himself in studying and memorizing the Bible and Quran, conducting lectures and public debates the world over. He wrote more than 20 books, now published in numerous languages. Ahmed Didat was known for his debates with evangelical figures. He delivered thousands of lectures around the world, engaged Christian evangelists such as Jimmy Swaggart in public debate, and talked with numerous Christian organizations and clerics in America. Listen to Ahmed Didat's speech to his Muslim audiences even some of whom I have a gut to challenge him for his murder thoughts and acts. South African Muslim scholar Ahmed Didat, I hate the Jews, Americans, if I had an atom bomb I'd drop it on Israel in a minute, archival Ahmed Didat, I hate the Jews. We all hate the Jews. Me, personally, I don't hate individual Jews. I hate Israel for what they are doing to my people, my sons, and my daughters. I hate them for that. If I had a laser gun. If I had an atom bomb, and if I could aim it on the Jews, Israel, I would do it. Audience member, say, Allah Akbar. Audience, Allah Akbar. Ahmed Didat, in the process, my Palestinian brothers and sisters will die, to me, Allah will reward them on the other side, but I would do the job, I wouldn't wait for one minute. By Allah, I wouldn't wait for one minute, if I had it. I hate the Jews for what they have done, they robbed my people of the land and know what they are doing to my brothers and sisters, my children. I hate them for that, and by extension, I hate the Americans. It is America that has caused all these problems. At the end of November 1947, America forced this resolution on the United Nations, partitioning Palestine. Did you know that? Stop here again and ask a question. Was Ahmed Didat a Palestinian father? Wasn't he an Indian origin? He was born in India and he had nothing to do in Palestine. Above all, his stupid Allah said he gave the land of Israel to the children of Israel. Allah asked the children of Israel to destroy all the people of Palestine but the children of Israel refused to do so and then the stupid Allah punished the Jewish people for 40 years in the wilderness. Here is a Quran verse that supposedly Allah said in Surah al akraf 137. We settled the children of Israel in a beautiful dwelling place and provided for them sustenance of the best. Then why did Ahmad not keep on cursing Israel? Was he better than his false prophet and false god called Allah? Please continue to listen to his satanic and vicious attack on the people and lands of Israel and America. We are not only fighting the Jews. We are fighting America. The whole world now. We have reached the stage where the whole world realizes that injustices are done by the Jews against the Palestinians. The whole world. And they pass resolutions. America, the godfather of Israel, vetoes it. 81 vetoes against resolutions by the whole world. The whole world is on one side, America and the illegitimate bastard child is on the other side, and they veto. The veto, veto. 81 vetoes. How do you feel? How do I feel? Frustrated. Now, my senses are not there. I want to see something done to the Jews, and something done to America. This is my feeling, everybody's feeling. So now my brother, Saddam Hussein, comes along, and he says, mother of all battles. That's the declaration he made mother of all battles. He gave the start. Now everybody is, saying, mother of this, mother of that. Mother of all battles. And it intoxicates everybody, including me. Although I said, this is not right, what he has done is not right, now he is promising me that he is going to send the American boys and girls back in body bags. For a change, after 81 vetoes. And Israel, he says I will burn half of Israel. 
How did you feel? How nice. After 42 years, we have a brother now. He is going to do the job for us. That's what he said. I don't know whether you remember. Sons and daughters of the Americans, I'll send them back in body bags. And Israel, half of Israel, I'm going to burn it. He has committed many sins, Saddam, but I am still prepared to overlook them, me, you, I think everybody. Look, because of him, one million Muslims died between Iran and Iraq. That's normal. We'll overlook that. He's raped Kuwait, we'll overlook it. He's killed the Kurds, poison gas the Kurds, men, women, and children, 5,000 in Halabia, we'll overlook it. He has been arming General Awan in Lebanon to kill the Muslims, I say we will overlook it. He is going to do our job for us. He is going to do our job for us. He will fix America right. He will fix the Jews right. But he lost the road. Instead of going to Israel, he goes to Kuwait. No, he lost the road, and that is pitiful. Audience member, a Muslim woman to Ahmed Didat, you talked about justice in your speech, and how important it is that we mustn't let our emotions get in the way. But then you went on to do exactly that, by saying that you would drop an atom bomb on Israel. How can you say that, and where in the Quran and Sunnah does it say that we are allowed to indiscriminately kill women and children, who may very well be innocent? Ahmed Didat, my dear sister, I was talking emotionally. This is how I feel. But if I had it. If we were Muslims and we were at war with Japan, during the Second World War with Japan, and you know it will cost you half a million lives before you can subdue Japan. The alternative was, either you throw the atom bomb and save your half a million, or allow half a million to die. I, as a natural person, a sensible person, I would be prepared to drop the atom bomb. But now, with regard to all your piety, religiosity, and spirituality, my dear sister, I have no answer. What you would do, I don't know. But I, if I had that thing in my hand, I would give an ultimatum, the immediate release of the Palestinians, immediate declaration of undeclaration of Israel. Immediate. If not, I'm giving you a warning. I'm giving you a warning. If you don't listen, I say you're gonna get it, exactly as America gave, Saddam an ultimatum to withdraw, until January 15th. Similarly, I say, now, I won't wait for such a long period. I say 24 hours. I want a declaration immediately. If I had the thing that I press the button and I could destroy the country, I say, look, this is what I would do. And I am no angel, I am telling you. I am not a Sufi, a spiritual person, nothing. I am just an ordinary human being, like any other Muslim. I say this is how my mind works and this is what I would do. On that higher level of standards, I leave it for better people to talk, discuss and debate. I am not fit for that. The audience member again asked him to give her reasons for his murderous thoughts and teachings. You did not answer my question. Is there evidence in the Quran and Sunnah to support what you say? What does Islam say on the subject? Ahmed Didat, you will ask the scholars, they will answer you. I don't like the Jews, not as a people, but what the nation is doing to my brothers and sisters, I hate them for it. I hate the Israeli nation for what they are doing to my children. If I had the atom bomb, and if I could direct it onto that nation, I would do it. It will kill some Palestinians too. I say, just too bad. Allah will give them paradise on the other side, Allah is willing. I believe that, martyr, martyr. But I will do it because of the wrongs that they are doing, I hate them so much. And by extension, I hate the Americans, because they created the problem. Why does Ahmed Didat keep saying Palestine Palestine while this stupid Allah gave the land to Israel and told the Jewish people to drive them out and kill them? My dear brothers, I am telling you now, I am warning you, if this is how you behave, like little children like the Christians behave, I am going to close the meeting, and I am going to walk out. And you'll say, D. Dot ran away. I am prepared to answer you. I am not running away. If you want to deliver lectures, the man tells you, come along and organize, they'll listen to you. Ask the question, and I will answer. Now there you are, like little children. The only time I came across an audience like this was in India, Indian Christians, like little puppies. Indian Christians, they behave like this. May Allah forgive me. My time. Discipline, discipline. This is the best nation brought forth, as an example, for mankind. Allah says, you are the best nation brought forth, as an example, for mankind. Discipline, brothers, discipline. Man. Look. I went and lectured to the Americans, just before coming here, in Duran, in KSA, at the military base. I have got pictures here. And you watch the people, the Christian Americans. 
there are videotapes that will be available. The discipline, the attention with which they are listening. You pay the guy $10,000 each to sit like this, and this is how you must look at the speaker. And you will digest and absorb everything that he says. I say, the guys couldn't have done it. $10,000 each, they couldn't have done it. But the Americans, the discipline that they have, it overwhelms you. Man, I take off my hat to the people. They are given a hearing. It is undermining their religion. What I am saying is undermining his religion, and yet he is prepared to applaud you if he has got the right. If he feels that you had a logical answer, but he doesn't accept your conclusion, but still he applauds you. Here, my brothers. My turn, I put my hand up first dash like little puppies, like little children. Why do you behave like that? Ahmed D. lived a life of lies and deception supported by major rich Arab countries and all Muslims of all sects. He advocated for terrorism, and hatred against any other religion than Islam, causing division among Christians and Jews and mightily attacking the Christian religion and our Bible. Muslim scholars themselves witness that Ahmed D. was a more famous Bible scholar than he is a Quranic scholar. Finally, after he ridiculed to the true and living God, twisting God's word and smearing with lies and deceptions all Bible characters, he was stroked by debilitating diseases. He laid down on his bed for nine years speechless and motionless. Didot suffered a stroke in 1996 that left him paralyzed and without the power of speech. Doctors said he would not live, but he continued to suffer day and night without any abating of his anguish. God punished him for his blasphemous words and satanic and poisonous ideologies. Finally passing away on 8th of August from kidney failure. Let us ask a bunch of questions, did Allah save Ahmed D. when he suffer immensely? No. He didn't save him. Did the Arab money save him from his agony and anguish? No, they didn't help him a bit. Did the famous drive, Dr. Zakir Naik treat Ahmed D. when he was in need of help? No, he didn't help him. Zakir Naik, himself is a terrorist who is accused by the Indian government. Dr. Zakir Naik himself is a fugitive and a criminal. Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior who taught humanity to love, respect, and support each other. In Christ Jesus, there is no boundary to love other people. No matter who they are or what their culture and religion are, we should love them all. Allah is a false god, Prophet Muhammad was a false prophet, a pedophile, a womanizer, a sex addict, a child molester, a robber and a murderer. I call all Muslims to abandon their false religion and embrace Christianity. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Stay away from Islam. Source Memory HTTPS colon slash slash www. Memory. Org slash TV slash South African Scholar D. Hate Jews Americans Adam Bomb on Israel. Al Yazira HTTPS colon slash slash www. Al Yazira. Com slash.